Hello and welcome to this video. Now today I've got something quite different for you. This is going to be a video about me making my own, uh, designing my own and manufacturing my own countdown bezels, um, custom made countdown bezels. Now these bezels for the SKX uh, 007 and similar watches are actually really hard to come by. So um, though there are some on the market, none of them are in this sort of style. So I decided just to make my own design. And I have a friend here in Dubai who is able to 3D print them in metal using his um, company's equipment that usually actually 3D prints stuff for the medical industry. Um, but he said, yes, why not? Let's try it. So I set to work designing a, a standard bezel insert. Uh, to do that, I just copied the dimensions of a flat simple bezel insert and then added the markers. Now you'll notice that this is a countdown bezel and um, that is one of the reasons why uh, I had to make it myself. So please uh, hang on to the end of this video because I'll explain why I even want a countdown bezel or a backwards bezel. Um, so those markers on there are extruded. Um, like it's the same with this one actually, this is um, and just another version, another way of doing it where we've got a little extra wall kind of on the inside and outside edges of this insert. And um, so that way, essentially, we could fill that, ne that empty space with something later, like paint or resin or um, almost anything, actually, loom perhaps as well. So the final design that I came up with as well is a, um, a flat insert that's actually got the numbers um, a little bit cut out of the top. Um, so they don't go all the way through, but they do. They are cut out, um, and again, with these, uh, we could fill them with some sort of paint or, or filling um, a bit later on. Um, so these are going to be printed in cobalt chrome. I'm hoping to be able to polish them up as well on the top surface. So let's have a look at what these bezels actually look like when they came back from printing. So here we have the 3D printed bezel inserts. Now I'll show you this first one quickly. Uh, this was the version one design I did. Um, it's got the extruded markers. Um, these are all countdown bezels actually. Uh, so the markers are kind of similar in uh, style. Um, you can see it's got that really quite rough. Let me zoom in a second, that rough kind of finish. Um, and then I polished the numbers on this. However, in my original design, I didn't really extrude the numbers far enough up so that when I polished them, there was still um, like a good amount of contrast. Uh, so that's something I addressed in the future designs. I also found that this material actually polishes quite easily um, and sands down uh, quite easily. So when I tried a Dremel tool up here, as you can see, uh, I took way too much off. So that was a first attempt, but I learned the limitations of this process uh, through trying this one. Um, after that, I decided to have a go at a different option. So this is the version two bezel, which looks much clearer and much better already. Um, there's been no processing done on this yet, and that's what I'm gonna start doing today, actually. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. So as you can see, it's still a countdown bezel. The markings go f sort of backwards, um, allowing you to count down. Um, you can see the interior of those cut out numbers is um, a lot darker now. Now I'm gonna clean this up and see if that is just uh, some maybe some bits of metal, some dirt in there as well. Um, and then I'm gonna paint them. So I'm gonna add a layer of paint into these markers and then I'm gonna polish the whole top. Uh, so we should remove some of the roughness on the top. I don't actually mind this kind of look anyway, but I would like it to be a bit more defined and a bit more flat on the top. Uh, on the backs, if you're wondering, this is what it looks like. It is quite flat. It isn't you know, perfect. It feels like it cones a little bit, um, sort of domes up a little bit at the edges. It's got this kind of pitted finish, which is also quite interesting. It looks like an, like an old piece of metal, even though it's brand new. Um, so there you have it. That is design number two, as it came from the printers. Now, finally, we have design number three. So in this idea, um, rather than cut the numbers out, as you saw here, so rather than having cut numbers, this one has extruded numbers again, like the first idea. They are extruded quite far, 
this time, so uh, almost twice as much as I did before. And um, that allows me to fill these spaces because they also have an edge up here and an edge inside. That allows me to fill these spaces with something. So I'm thinking to just paint them for now and then polish the whole top just like I would with this one. Uh, and that way those numbers are gonna be much more obvious, much more clear and much more like my rendered idea. Um, this one uh, generally is pretty accurate. The sizes are all okay. This one came out a bit thicker. Um, I think that must have been an issue in my design, but also right up here next to the triangle, it looks like those markings are kind of slanted in a little bit. So maybe that marker there is a bit more clear. Um, so they're not completely flat on the top. Fortunately, I've got quite a lot of material to play with in terms of finishing it. So let's see how it looks after some paint. So I've now painted the bezel inserts. As you can see, um, what I decided to do in the end was just um, uh, spray paint them with some enamel, uh, some high strength sort of enamel paint. And as you can see, I've managed to get it all the way inside all the crevices that way. It's quite quick and easy to do. I've left them to dry for a day and now I'm about to start polishing the top with just some sandpaper. Uh, so here is how I'm doing it. You can actually see this was the other bezel insert. So it's still got some of the paint on there. I've put it inside a sacrificial bezel because this one is quite scratched up. It's not a very good quality one. I don't plan to use this. So um, this allows me to actually grip the bezel itself quite well and simply rub it on this sandpaper like so. Uh, I've already started to do it and I'm already quite pleased with the results. Um, so let's see how long this takes me and what this looks like when it comes out. The idea here is to leave the paint inside the crevices, inside the cutout parts, and obviously take it off everywhere else. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, I won't bore you with the entire process, uh, but I'll be back once I've completed. So here's the uh, result so far. It's not quite finished yet. As you can see, there are still some um, rough parts which need to come off, but I'm pretty pleased with this finish so far. I think this is looking great. Um, and once it's properly cleaned up, it's gonna look quite professional. Um, one thing I'd like to do though, I don't know if you can see this clearly on the camera. Let's try and zoom in a little bit. Um, the direction of the brushing, I'm trying to keep it uh, to 12 o'clock vertically down the watch um, because uh, essentially we are brushing the finish on the metal or obviously removing parts. I will go at it with some finer grade sandpaper. This is 180, um, but just to help me out a bit, I'm just gonna find the point uh, at the top, which is around here. I'm gonna draw myself a little mark that I can see from the other side. Sorry, you can't see there. Just with this sort of permanent pen I've got. Remember this bezel is useless to me anyway. Um, that way, I can always remember which way round I should be holding the bezel from the other side when I'm doing the polishing. So there we go. Let's give it another go now that I know which direction to go in and see how it comes out. So this is how I've done so far and I'll trust you'll agree it's looking pretty good. Um, this is uh, of course the first version, I've got another one to do yet, I might save that for another video actually. Um, let's see if I can get the focus on, on the finish. So the finish, uh, the, the, the markers are a little darker, they're not completely black. Um, You'll see up here, you see that little gouge, that's actually just the um, the bezel itself and that doesn't affect the, um, the insert that I'm making. I've managed to get rid of all the paint apart from on the markers, which makes it look fantastic, I think, now. And the next stage is to see what to do about the finish. So currently the finish is quite scratchy, as you can see. I've tried to keep it sort of brushed downwards, but I guess um, it's pretty much impossible to get the finished spot on. So what I'm gonna try and do is just use a finer grade of sandpaper uh, to try and give it a more of a, a uniform polish, uh, maybe some uh, sort of wet and dry as well to try and get it really bright, maybe even some Cape Cod 
Um, so we'll see how I get on and I'll show you the finished product in a watch very soon. So here we go guys, these are two watches that I've installed my bezels on. Um, let's start with this grey one. This was the one that you saw me working on in the previous video and as you can see it's nice and legible now. It's really nice and clear and if we go in at a bit of a closer shot, um, apart from a few little nicks here and there, um, the finishing I've tried to keep pretty vertical. Uh, the triangle at the top didn't come out so good. Um, I think the print was a bit rough at the top edge. I might be able to hide that with a little bit of paint. Um, but overall, especially with the numbers, I am super impressed with this process. I think this looks really quite professional, even though I just made this at home um, from a rough piece of metal and finished it up. I'm pretty impressed with uh, the result. Uh, so if you're wondering why on earth would I want a backwards bezel, well, I think a countdown bezel is actually a bit more useful than a count up bezel, as you would use on a typical dive watch. Um, so say I know I have a meeting at uh, 3.45, I could set the bezel triangle to, three, to 45 minutes past, and now I know I have 11 minutes before that my meeting. Um, I'm a teacher and actually a countdown bezel in a classroom is far more useful than a count up one. So I could be setting students task and then counting down uh, to the end of that task. If I've told them that they've got five minutes to do a task, I could set this to five minutes and then I know exactly when I should be stopping the task. Same with exam papers and stuff like that. Or even uh, if you're a sports teacher, you could be thinking about, well, um, it's a 45 minute football game when, uh, let's set this to 45 and then you'll know when, what time to blow the whistle. So that's the idea anyway. Um, it's supposed to be a watch designed for a teacher because that's one profession that is often overlooked, I think, in uh, potential uh, watch designs. And yeah, there we go. That is the first iteration. Not, the, not absolutely perfect. I'm a bit upset about the triangle, but overall it's a very usable product, so I'm very happy with it. Let's have a look at version two. Now this I've put on a Seiko 5 Sport, uh, and it's got a green dial and a nice brand new green sort of suede strap there. And this one, I think, looks a lot more vintage sort of style and does go with this watch quite nicely. Um, the finish here, it's a bit deeper and you can see the roughness if I hold it at this kind of angle in the paint, um, which kind of makes it look like an old, I don't know, submarine metal or something like that that's been painted. Uh, and then, But then the polishing does come up really nice and smooth and modern. Um, I did mess it up a little bit here. I think actually it wasn't, again, printed as perfectly as I'd like. So um, when I was polishing it, this polished up a bit too far uh, to make everything else line up. So a couple little edits I need to do maybe on the designs or maybe I was just unlucky, but still, I think that is a nice looking final bezel. And I really hope someone professionally makes these kind of bezel designs because I would snap them up in a heartbeat. I think they look pretty sweet. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'm always interested in your comments and feedback. Please drop them below and I'll see you next time.